Hi there, I'm Scarlett Sternhart, and this is my story. Make sure to turn up the volume on your device for the best experience. I suggest listening with headphones or earbuds. Feel free to pause at any time while enjoying my story. Thanks for clicking on the video. Enjoy. My name is Scarlett Stoneheart. I'm 18 years old. I was born in Dundal, the small village in Mistfall. And my parents originally wanted to name me Charlotte, but they named me Scarlett instead because of the birthmark on my back of the neck. My parents, Serafina and Adrian, raised me very well and taught me that I must be kind to everyone and have hope inside of me at all times. And I always followed that path that they led for me. My mother worked at an art museum when I was around four or five years old. I remember trying to remake all of the famous paintings in my little journal. I thought that I w was the best artist ever, and, well, I was only five years old, so I didn't know any better. My father was also very into the arts, but he had more of the taste for musical arts. He even taught me how to play a little piano, too. I'm still not very advanced, because that was back when I was four years old, but maybe I'll try learning again someday and bring back all those old memories. I remember one day me and my dad were in Jorvik City and my father was being, singing beautifully and I was trying to get everyone in the mall to come and listen to him and afterwards we just laughed and laughed about how their expressions when they heard him singing. That was one of the best memories I've ever had. If only good times like that lasted forever. But... Even fairy tales can't have good times at all times. And, well, one morning, me and my mother were make, making some biscuits, and then she received a call from my father's boss. I didn't hear what they said to her, but I assumed it was something bad. She looked very scared and worried. As soon as, I, as she hung up, she told me to get in the car immediately. I was only six at the time, so I didn't understand what was going on. When we arrived at the hospital, me and my mother rushed into my father's room. He was connected to a hundreds and maybe thousands of wires and cords and just uh, so much. And as soon as we walked in there, my mother started to cry. And I just walked up to him and asked, Daddy, what's the matter? And he said, well, sometimes in life, people need to go somewhere and they won't come back until you see them again. He said to me, but, and I was just really confused. I said, but where are you going? Why are you leaving me and mommy? He said, and he said, honey, I love you so much, and I love your mother too, but I have to leave. It's somewhere with peace and relaxation. No stress, no anger, no negativity. Just me in the clouds. That is where I'll be, he told me while holding my hand. I was still confused, but I understood that he had no choice. Then I asked him, will you forget about me? And he said, well, no, 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 no. Dear Scarlet, I can never forget you. No matter how far or close we are, I'll never forget you or your mother. At the time, I never meant anything of that, but now that sentence is just, it means so much to me, and I can't believe that I just completely ignored that at the time. And then he grabbed my hand and held my mother's in his right hand. The last thing he ever said to anyone, including me, was, promise me to have everlasting hope and courage. My eyes started to water, even if I didn't understand. I knew it was super important. And then he closed his eyes, and his pulse was gone. He passed away right in my grasp. I didn't even know at the time what happened, but growing up, I realized it. Then I had no idea what was going on. Then, when we were driving home, my mom asked me if I was okay, and I said I'm okay, but I don't know why he had to leave us in the hospital. She said that I'll understand someday, and now I do. 
When I was nine years old, I was looking through old stuff and I found a sheet of music. It was called Courageous Heart. It was something my father wrote, but never got to perform, unless he didn't want to. Maybe it was too private or special to him to perform and show to the public. Either way, it was the sweetest thing. It was about me, and it was about this girl who, despite all the problems in life, just kept going and had courage along every step. I started to tear up as soon as I read the lyrics. I just thought in my head, why did this happen to me? My mother walked in and saw my face covered in tears. My cheeks were bright red, out of control, and my hand was shaking. She asked me what happened, and I showed her the sheet of music. To be honest, I don't think she even saw the sheet before. She asked me if I was okay. I told her, I suppose I just miss him. I was so young when he passed. I only remember the big parts of us together. I just wish I had a second chance. One last chance to say goodbye. She hugged me and I and said everything in life happens for a reason. And that reason was because life knew that he'd be waiting for us to join him again someday. And we will be with him again. Some. A year later, my mother asked me if I could join her for a nice picnic in the park. It was so relaxing and calm. We watched the birds fly around and looked for flowers in the bushes. It made me forget everything about what just happened a few months ago. But when we were eating, I asked her why she was doing all this for me, making my favorite biscuits and doing all this crazy stuff that she never wanted to do before. She said that because I want you to have great memories of me, unlike what you had with your father. That way we'll always have these good memories. That way you'll always remember me. But why, I asked her. And then she told me something I could have never imagined she'd say. Well, they told me that if... If I don't go into the hospital and get all these medications, I will pass from this world. And I'll be with your father again. I started to cry and sob. And she said that it's okay. I asked why this is happening. Why is this all happening to me? Why can't I just have a normal life like everyone else? She told me that she had an illness and not, if not treated with the right medicine, she would pass away. She hugged me as soon as I just, I just went to the ground and cried and sobbed and sobbed and sobbed. But honey, your grandparents will do a great job raising you. I know it's hard to understand, but this is just what our lives are like. We can't change that. We can't change what our destinies are. We just have to follow it and hope it leads us in the right track. She told me as I looked devastated. We packed up our blankets and plates, and when we got home, we just spent the whole night watching movies and cuddling together. The next morning, my mother gave me her favorite necklace and told me to keep it for a while until she got back from the hospital. My mother loved horses and dreamt of riding one someday, Although she never got the chance, she took care of them and really wanted me to find one that I wanted to be with forever. A few weeks before she went to the hospital, she taught me how to care for a horse and taught me how to ride and hoped that I would be able to fulfill her destiny and dreams of becoming an equestrian rider. And she went to the hospital to get her treatments, and my grandparents watched me for the month. The next month, I went to visit my mother. I was getting so many bad flashbacks as soon as I stepped one foot inside the doors of the hospital. She was hooked up to wires and cords just like my father was. She was crying and hugging me tighter than she ever had before. I knew instantly something was wrong. I asked her immediately what was wrong, and she told me her medications weren't curing anything, and she'll have to stay in the hospital and hope she survives the illness. The doctors 
um, had me leave the room, and I didn't hear what they said, but they were talking to her about something. I came back into the room and asked her what they said. She started to cry, and she said, well, she said that she probably wouldn't make it any longer. That's what they told her. I told her to keep fighting and to save her strength as long as she can. She nodded and said she doesn't think she can stay much longer. And she can't stay very strong anymore. I told her I promise to have everlasting hope and courage. I love you, Mom. And she passed away just like that. Everything I did back there reminded me of my father. And now it's happened to both of my parents. I, I felt like everything I knew and everything I did was all for nothing. I questioned everything and cried the rest of the night. And I felt like nothing would ever make me happy again. I was worried I would never know what true happiness felt like ever again. I knew I kept a promise and I didn't want to break it. And so I stayed strong for several years. Once I turned 16, I decided to restart, refresh myself, and make some new memories. Golden Hills Valley was my chance to have a new life, to refresh every moment, every bad moment, everything that made me cry. And I'm so glad I did. One morning, I was sketching in my book, drawing a horse or something, and this girl walked up to me and actually complimented my art. I said, thank you. I'm sure you have a beautiful horse. Everyone here does except me. And she said, well, why don't you go and pet mine? She actually let me pet her adorable, golden, beautiful Welsh pony. And we became best friends instantly. Then we heard a horse whinnying in the distance. It came running into the stables, covered in thorns. It must have gotten to, into the thorn bushes, yelled Claire. I felt so bad for the poor creature. So bad that I followed my mother's advice and took care of the horse quicker than a vet could. By the time the veterinarians arrived, the horse was already back on its hooves, but they said they can't find any stables to take it in this soon. So I said, I'll take the horse in instead. What will you name it, Scarlet? asked Claire. I stood there for a few seconds, thinking of the perfect name, and then it hit me. The last words my father told me, that will be her name. Ever promise. Ever promised is her name, I said with a smiling, with a smile. Ah, oh, that's adorable. It's so beautiful, Scarlet. Where'd you get that name from? Claire asked. I told her, it's from someone I love. Then I met Claire's friends, and we soon became the Missing Claire Squad. We have been through a lot of crazy and weird adventures, but honestly, it made our bonds a lot stronger, and I'm so thankful to have them. Thanks so much for listening to this audio story. I worked very hard on it, and I hope you really like it. My advice? Don't lose hope. Hope is what keeps you going, no matter how deep you're in. You can come out if you just have the hope. Thanks for watching this audio story. Special thanks to the creator of the art, Andrea T. For all the information, read the description of the video. Goodbye! Rabbits out and speaks out for now. Bye!